In this video, I'm going to take a look at a set of four neutral density magnetic filters from KNF Concept. I'll discuss the kinds of situations where it's good to use a neutral density filter, show you the practical impact of filters with different strengths of density, and hopefully give you some inspiring ideas for using these filters, outdoors and indoors. Some time ago, I posted a video about how you can use filters to create interesting effects, and this prompted KNF Concept to contact me and ask whether I'd like to review some of their filters, unpaid, but I get to keep the filters. Well, I already know KNF Concept because I purchased their adapters for my lenses. I found their products to be very well made and excellent value. They gave me a choice of various different types of filter, and I opted for a set of magnetic neutral density filters. I'll call them ND filters from now on. The kit gets very good reviews online, and I like using ND filters on walk-around lenses, but not all the time. It depends on the light and the scene, so having magnetic filters that easily come off and on a lens seems like a great idea. You don't have to fuss around with screwing on and off the filter each time, especially if you're trying different types of filter. The kit I'm testing is made for 52mm lens filter sizes. I'm going to try the filters, for most of the time, on one of my favourite wide-angle lenses, a Pentax SMC 28mm f3.5, also known as the K28 3.5. This is a lens I've been meaning to feature on a YouTube video for a while, because it's one of the best mid-price wide-angle old lenses I've used. It's not as expensive or as fast as some of the film era 28mm lenses, but it's a really good lens. It's sharp from wide open with nice bouquet, but it's the colour rendering that I find particularly impressive. In the right light, the colours are superb. So this is a good opportunity to show you how well the lens performs with the filters, and I'll comment on performance as we go along. By the way, I'll be using a few other lenses as well, where appropriate. Now I should say a few words about the use of ND filters in general, and their impact on f-stops and exposure times. ND filters come in different degrees of darkness. The darkest filter in this kit has a light reduction effect equivalent to around 10 stops. The filters don't change the colours or sharpness of your images, i.e. they have a neutral impact, as long as you get the settings right. They can help you increase exposure time and create more smooth, blurred effects in your images, especially where there's movement behind stationary objects. But that's not the only use they have. They're useful for adding contrast to bright and cloudy skies, for example, or dealing with very bright light conditions when your camera or video recorder would otherwise struggle to cope. I suppose the classical image produced with ND filters is water lapping up against some rocks on a beautiful sandy beach, where the much slower exposure times give the water a glossy, glassy, almost mirrored appearance, all with beautiful vibrant colours if the image has been taken with a good lens. Well, we don't have any beautiful sandy beaches here in London, so my challenge in this video is to find other creative ways of using ND filters, outdoors and indoors, and I hope you'll enjoy what I've come up with. This is what you get with the KNF Concept Kit. A smart carrying pouch which fits nicely into my camera bag. The adapter ring which you screw onto the front of the lens. You can buy other filter sizes if you prefer. The kit comes with four different ND filters. The first filter is actually a graduated ND filter, a GND. It's good for situations when you want to reduce the brightness and exposure from part of your composition. Then there are three ND filters with different levels of density, starting with an ND8 that has a light reduction effect equivalent to three stops, then an ND64 with an effect of six stops, and an ND1000, the darkest of the set, with an effect of ten stops. I like how the ND1000 has a noticeably thinner body width. It helps to identify the filter quickly from the others when they're in the pouch. In a minute, I'll show you the impact these different filters have in practice, but before this, I'd like to say that the filters are solid, and they're well made. There's more information online about the materials used and technical details if you're interested. The magnetic contact is strong. You can't shake the filter off walking around, although it will fall off if you knock the front of the lens hard against the side of your camera bag, for example, so you do need to be reasonably careful. Overall, I think the magnetic filter approach is a very neat concept, especially for filters like these. They're really easy to take on and off and switch around. So let's get started with the graduated ND filter. Because of the magnetic attachment, you can decide on the orientation you want for the graduated filter. For example, you can have the dark part of the filter on top if you want to reduce the exposure in the sky. 
useful for a very bright sky, photographed against the darker ground or buildings. Here's a composition taken under some trees by a lake, where I've used the GND for the sky. As you can see, the filters help to bring out the contrast with the clouds, while retaining a lighter look at ground level. I do like the colours the lens has delivered here. Sticking with clouds and contrasts, here's another example. This is one of the really good things about the GND filter, and indeed other less dense ND filters. As I said, one of the advantages of the magnetic arrangement is that you can easily rotate the GND filter so the dark part is on the bottom, something you might want to do if you need to deal with very bright parts of the ground or water. I've done this here where I wanted to reduce the lightness of the dry glass and the rope at the bottom. Or you can turn the darker parts to the side if, for instance, there's a lot of bright light on one side. You can clearly see the impact of this sideways orientation in this photo. The sun was out of the frame on the top left hand side, and you can see what the filter does to the sky and the clouds. I know some people like to see videos as well as stills, so in this clip I'm rotating the GND filter 360 degrees around, and you can see what happens. I've used this filter quite a lot since getting it. It's a very useful addition to my kit. The one downside to me is that when you're photographing clear blue skies, or skies with only a few clouds, the graduated effects can sometimes look a little overdone, as I think you can see here, in which case it's better to use one of the non-graduated ND filters. And while we're looking at this full frame image, I should add that I didn't see any vignetting from the filter rings themselves. Now I'll show you how the three different ND filters impact the exposure times needed to produce a similar looking image. I've talked about the f-stop impact of ND filters, but for me the critical impact is on exposure times, not the f-stop you use, because it's the exposure times that can dictate image effects, such as blurred motion. So for this demonstration, I'm going to keep the f-stop at a constant f8 and play with the exposure times, or more accurately, I let the camera work out appropriate exposure times. This image was taken without a filter at f8, and the exposure time is shown on the image on the screen. Just for the record, here's the result with the GND filter at the same speed. Using centered spot metering, this is the speed required to lighten up the image with the GND filter on, so it matches the no filter image. Now with the least dense filter, the ND8, this is what the image looks like at the no filter speed. To get a good image, the exposure time needs to be slowed to 1 160th of a second. And now with the ND56, the same two photo examples. And finally the ND1000 is extremely dark, and you need 0.8 seconds to get a good image. The longer exposure times raise an important issue in terms of how you use the filters, and that's the need for a tripod, or at the very least an extremely solid base to plant the camera on, especially when you're using the ND64 and ND1000 filters. You really can't hand hold the camera with the stronger ND filters. Well, you can, but you're unlikely to get good, clean, in focus photos. With quite a range of exposure times required for the different filters, even on a bright sunny day, this begs the question what kind of situations and compositions are best for each filter? Well, for me, the least dense filter, the ND8, works best as a walk around filter that I can use handheld, as long as the light is bright enough. It doesn't slow down the exposure so dramatically that all moving objects are a complete blur or disappear. By disappear, I mean that with the darkest ND filter, people or other moving objects can actually become little more than light smudges. Instead, with the ND8, you might see movement, but it's pretty clear what's going on. By the way, I do like how the lens has rendered the out-of-focus areas in this particular shot, another of the real strengths of the K28 f3.5. One of the other advantages of using this filter, especially in very bright light, is how it helps to deal with that bright light when the lens is wide open. I like to shoot scenes almost straight into the sun to capture interesting bouquet effects. Sometimes my camera and lens struggles to cope with the bright light, and the ND8 filter gives me more control of that light. This shot was taken with the Minolta MC Rocker PF55F1.7, and it turned out well with the filter. 
Without the filter, despite the lens's multi-coating designation, it was not happy with the sunlight coming from the top left and bouncing off the pavement. The filters won't get rid of lens flare, and it's a shame you can't easily keep a hood on the magnetic filter when you're using a notorious flarer like the Minolta. But the filters certainly help controlling exposures in very bright light wider open, so it's a matter of trade-offs. I'm going to skip the middle strength ND filter for a moment and go straight to the darkest filter, the MD1000. It's dark, and it's perfect in the right light, for capturing images when you want extremely blurred movement, or that classic glassy looking water. Here's my take on glassy still water, with the bonus of a small waterfall. There's a larger waterfall hidden in the photo, and I went to take some photos of this too. You can see the ghosts of people walking towards me. I had fun photographing and smoothing out the cascade, hitting the pool of water at the bottom. And also videoing the whole effect. Here's some smoothed out river water. I also went to Westminster and had some fun with scenes around there, starting with this photo looking towards the Houses of Parliament. The pavement was quite busy, but many of the people sort of disappeared at these exposure times. If you like photos of places, without a lot of tourists in focus looking around, this is one way of achieving this effect. Then on to the London Eye, where I initially had two problems. Firstly, a security guard came up and said that if I was going to use a tripod, I'd be classed as a professional photographer, and I'd have to get a permit to take photos. It's a sign of the times. And I moved out of his eyesight. The second problem was that having schlepped across Westminster in the morning to try and capture the Ferris wheel in motion, the bloody wheel wasn't working. Fortunately, it was fixed before I left, and I ended up getting some pretty good images. I rather like converting these kinds of images to black and white as well. So all in all, I'd say this darkest of the filters is a good one to have and use, as long as you have a tripod or very solid base at hand. Now onto the middle strength ND filter, the ND64. It's still quite dark, quite a difference from the ND8, as you can see from the exposure times I showed you before. Outdoors is good for situations where the light is not so strong and the MD1000 is simply too dark. You can still smooth out movement, playing with the f-stops as well as the exposure times. Here's a series of shots taken at Earls Court train station, with people getting on and off a tube train. And at night outside, most noticeably in urban areas with more lights from buildings, street lights and cars, etc. It's a good option, allowing you to slow down the exposure times a lot more than if you had no filter. Good for extended lines from car lights, and it would work well for lit up bridges, I imagine. You can also have fun with this filter at home indoors, as I've done with some different subjects, and I'll show you a few of the results using a 50mm macro lens, a photo of a ticking clock, a spinning toy carousel. And this is from portrait photos displayed on my iPad, the iPad is sitting on a rotating display stand, and I've tried to focus on one eye at the centre for each portrait as the stand spins. Images that can be fun or spooky depending on your outlook. One more, a more abstract image. It's based on a G-clamp also sitting on the rotating stand. This is what happens when the stand rotates and I use the much longer exposure time that is possible using the ND64 filter. And three examples of the images I've taken in the past with ND filters of similar strength, where the ND effect works well. Two from foggy days. And this one, tracking a plane coming into land at Heathrow Airport. So alongside the other ND filters and the GND, the ND64 is a very useful addition. Indeed, this is one of my main conclusions from this kit of ND filters. It's great to have a range of densities with the magnetized filters. It gives you the opportunity to switch between different levels of density, depending on the light, the scenes you're photographing, and what you're trying to achieve. 
I'm very grateful to KNF Concept for giving me the opportunity to try out these high quality filters. They work very well on the K28 f3.5, further enhancing my enjoyment of this lens. And I'll definitely be taking the filters on holiday as well, dreaming of the perfect sandy beach. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the results, and I've given you some ideas and inspiration for using the ND filters outdoors and indoors. I've included a link to KNF Concepts website in the description below, and you'll see these ND filters are not the only filters and kits they provide. And of course I welcome any comments on the video, and it would be great to hear your own personal experiences and tips with ND filters. So until the next time, all the best.